Um, I'm with Moxa. Uh, a couple of you may know Moxa already, uh, probably from something totally different. Um, a couple of you may have used our serial products already. At least that's what I learned this morning. Ah, Moxa, you are doing a device service. Um, that's indeed true. Uh, Moxa is a 30-year-old company. We're going to celebrate our 30, 30th anniversary this year. And the company was founded in, in 87, in the late 80s, basically just developing uh, multi-port serial ports at that time, when industry discovered um, that there are so many things to be controlled with a PC. At that time, there was no Ethernet, and, um, but the people were starting to automate and, and use communication. Uh, Moxa has made its way since the 80s, um, following the track consistently uh, from these multi-port serial ports moving into the upcoming Ethernet, away from host-based architectures to network-centric architectures, and has ramped up a, a switch port for you in the uh, last 20 years. Um, switches and device servers, or I should say serial or even what we call edge connectivity oriented products, continue similar revenue to our business in 2017. Um, we have been adding for the last 10 years additional product lines uh, starting from IP video cameras, um, going into specifically into embedded computers, um, also having um, wireless products, for example, in real applications, as well as I.O. products. Um, the Moxa is serving industry only. You won't see us neither in the consumer space nor in any enterprise area. We are focusing on vertical markets, um, namely power and rail, but we also serve oil and gas, factory automation, intelligent transportation systems, marine. And today I will show you what we can provide for for the power market. Um, when I sat down with Fred um, to agree on the title, it was so important for Fred for, that he said, you need to say communication networks, okay, because you're in the power industry and if you talk network, they're going to think about something totally different. And But excuse me, please, I will make it short. Whenever I talk about a network, just think about an IP network. And what this... Uh, is about today is basically talking about managing networks, okay? And again, after I had agreed with Fred, I said like, hmm, the topic is clear, but if I would do this, I would be finished in three minutes. Because I would tell you something that you already know, the, the bits and bytes on how the things that I'm gonna present work is very well known to you already. And when I th had a, a second thought on this, I thought like, but why do we still, why is it still not so popular, what we have been proposing for a couple of years? And it came to my mind that whenever I talk to customers promoting the MMS server capabilities of the switches we have for the power market, there are two types of customers. One customer says, oh, oh that's interesting. Hmm, I can integrate this into my power SCADA system. How beautiful. I'll show you how it works later, okay? The second customer tells me, oh, go away. I have a network management software, okay? And maybe from Hirschman, and sometimes it may be, it's yours. <laughs> you have been selling me the network management software already. And indeed, Moxa does also do network management, generic network management software. So what I want to discuss today is basically what to choose when, what are the differences, what are the benefits, and that's how you see the agenda. I will, first in the first half, basically, I will, I will walk you through what is general network management about today, what tools are used, what is customer's expectations. And then the second topic is basically the core. It's about SCADA, what I call SCADA integrated network management because this is what IC6150 services for network management is about. And you will see an example that I give you why I made such a kind of generalization. You will see an application example which will lead you also to the demo that we will do in the workshop tonight and tomorrow. I'm here with Patrice Roussel, that's our application engineer, who will help you on all the technical questions. And uh, at the end, I'm going to give you a comparison and outlook, and uh, actually no recommendation, because as you all know, it's eventually down to the customer to choose what and when. So, why network management? Well, there are a lot of reasons, and if you ask people what is network management about, they come up a lot of, very often with things like, I need it for troubleshooting, quick error detection, overall my business scenarios, I need lower downtimes, networks are a critical part of infrastructure, blah, blah, blah. It's so important, I need that, okay. 
people are focused on errors and issues, okay? But once you look into popular network management software, you will see that network management actually starts way earlier. It starts from the deployment phase. And when I saw your slides this morning, I realized that the flow, even the PowerPoint clip art you were using, <laughs> were similar to the ones that, that we have. It's kind of an agreed way of how network management looks. I will show you in a second. And when I listened to Thomas uh, this morning, um, I also understood that we're looking into distributed networks these days. The classical pyramid is, I wouldn't say it's over, but it has to be realized if you look into the definition of industry 4.0, there's one term they say that it needs to be horizontal integration. So we're looking into inter-substation communication. We're looking into remote networks where you are not part, but you need to know what's happening in those networks. So these are all new items um, when you look into network management. So let's start about what is network management, general network management about. And I dare to say general network management is life cycle management. Yeah, because you start from the installation phase, all those tools, they cover installation, operation, maintenance, and diagnostics. And what I will show you in the next couple of, li of slides is basically you can sort that into each of these buckets, basically. Okay, so installation, yes, easy configuration, operation, efficient, monitoring, easy backup, quick troubleshooting. These are the items that customers are looking for. So let's start with the easy one. That's what everybody thinks when you look into network management. It's about visualization, of course. You want to know how does your network look like, who is talking to whom, who is who, you need to understand the nodes, what kind of switch, what kind of end device actually is, is linked to which other device. And then in the second round, you want to look into how, what's going on. So you want to have a kind of a live view on what's going on. That is kind of, you want to see, understand the bandwidth, load, for example, in a link. You may want to look into the current configuration of a certain node. And even more, when you go down to troubleshooting, basically, you want to know if there's anything wrong. You want to see this highlighted. And very easy, if a link goes down, okay, a network, a network management software, the at least the visualization part of it, should show that this link is red, broken, whatever, to show, oh, here's the issue. Now, Typically, networks have the <coughs> characteristics that if one link breaks down, okay, you will not see anything which is behind that link, right? Okay. So how can a network management software know what's happening all, in all those devices when this link is down? And in fact, this is one of the major challenges um, when you want to visualize the network because before you could do this, but well, that's not interesting, okay? So you need to know what happened when. And in complex networks, a single failure can cause a cascade, an avalanche of succeeding failures, okay? And of course, a smart guy who knows the topology inside out will know, ah, okay, all right, all right. if this part of the network is that, it's probably this link, okay? But that's not the, that's an experienced um, operator, okay? Um, what you, that's actually the task of a network management visualization tool. So typically in the old days, you were looking into log files telling you in numbers and, and, and text who was doing what and when. And there's even here some visualization in terms of how severe is what happened, okay? That, that is totally distracting actually, but that's the core databases. What we have been implementing in our general network management is a, a, a time scale where you can up, run up and down and see what happened at which status. So you see the network status uh, locked for a while and you basically visually run through um, the, events, the events that happen in a network. And when you try this, it's really easy. A, 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 a sim you can easily identify this thing broke down and you lost this and you lost this and it's, the thing is done. That's about visualization. I talked about links and device and of course, if you have a device, you want to click on it. This is the time of tapping, clicking. I want to see how is it configured, what's, what's working. We want to see the details. Once you do this, you easily get into the next challenge and the next requirement. So, well, if I can see what's if that's the configuration of this node, I want to change it. So, of course, you can have an online change of the configuration. Yeah. And then 
Well, next things are, as you have the configuration, that, as you can see, the configuration of each node, the next step is, of course, you just sum up all the configurations and you can, you can save them in one file. Or, in the deployment phase, you have already the configurations pre-configured and you let the network discover itself and then you deploy it. Various ways of doing this, but in general, network backup automation, that's the key word, is automatically backing up the configuration of the network. Now, step by step, you get into something which is even more comfortable. Okay? Assume you have a healthy network at a certain point in time. We can take a snapshot, basically in a, a dump of all the network configuration in terms of topology and configuration, save it for the time when your network has failed. Visualizing that there is something failed is easy, that's what I showed you before, but finding the root cause is not that easy sometimes. Okay? So what you do basically is you compare the networks, and in this case you can figure out between the two snapshots that you did, that in this case for example, an access port was reconfigured to become a trunk port and that's why the network failed. That's basically state of the art, what you do with networks. And I want to go now into a, a new topic, okay, uh, which I think is very important these days, and that's cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is everywhere. Every conference I'm in, every customer I talk to, uh, at a certain point in time, cybersecurity comes in. The issue is everyone needs it. No one really knows how to define and what to, how to comply with. There are a couple of standards. There's IC 62443, 62351, 62 there's the BDE, W white paper, there's NERCSIP, okay? And they're covering all different aspects of cybersecurity. What I picked here is a 62443, which is a nice standard that defines cybersecurity on, on different levels of application, starting from the production of a device, going to number four, the device itself, going into systems, going into, de into deployment, and some basic things. So IEC 62443 has a couple of chapters, and the most interesting chapter for network deployment is chapter four, which deals with the device itself. Basically the cybersecurity status of the device that says, is the user interface protected with a password? Is the password according to the rules that have been set up? Is the access to the device based on, on, <coughs> on, on user groups? A lot of things uh, which in 62443 have been combined and put to certain levels. You can comply on a, on a, in chapter four, your products can comply to a cybersecurity hardened status on level one and also on level two. And what we did is basically, we integrated this into our network management software that scans all the devices, at least the MOXA devices, and looks into how much is that cybersecurity level, how, how much do they comply to. Okay? So you, in one snapshot, you get a, a quick overview of the cybersecurity status of your network. And of course, you can then, if you find some trouble, okay, you can check the security wizard. You can go into the um, device, you say I want to comply to 4, 2, level 2, and then you see what you need to change in order to comply, in order to come back to a healthy status. So high, medium, and basic are the ones that we show here as a status, and you see what you have to comply for on which level in order to achieve that level. So this is what a general network management tool can do today. That's quite new, honestly speaking. And the last word on that is, I already mentioned Industry 4.0, uh, distributed remote networks. That's also part of network management because the network that you want to monitor is not always the one where you're currently in. Okay? For cybersecurity reasons, it is better that you're in the network in order to see what's going on. But at least you want to be notified in a remote substation if anything goes wrong. So remote access associated with a secure access, typically using VPN, is the way to go. And you see that is today already possible to do this on mobile devices. We have actually an app developed that will access the server where we run our network management software, um, which will send uh, through a VPN tunnel 
the notifications what's happening in the network. On a very high level, this is not intended to manage the network with all the details that I just presented. It's more like a, a, a quick information and high level uh, overview on, on the status of the network. So, this is the beauty that you can do with a general network management suite. So what's the benefit of a SCADA integrated management? Let's look into this. And I'm going to give you an example. And this belongs to the part that we should open our view, okay? Which is happening in factory automation already, okay? What's happening there? Factory automation has a very famous protocol, that's just Ethernet IP. Profinet is one of the most famous protocol being used especially in Europe with a high growth rate. And Profinet works like there are Profinet controllers and there are I.O. devices. The I.O. devices are basically part of the field level. The controller is on the management level, typically on the control level here. And they exchange data um, in an uh, um, interesting manner. They have roles and actually there are parameters of the devices that have to be monitored. Okay? And in order to show the capability of the devices, Profinet requires that devices um, have a GSD file which shows the capabilities of the, of the device. What does this have to do with switches? Basically, switches are supposed to be transparent for Profinet. You can use any kind of switch to transfer Profinet. That's the architecture of Profinet. But if you want to get a qualified a Profinet certified switch, you have to comply with a couple of things that you do in managed switches like quality of service, queuing stuff to ensure that the performance of a Profinet certified switch is according to what you need when you design a Profinet network. Not too hard. But what we have been developing for the last years is we said the switch should show up in the network as a network device, as an I.O. device actually, to make it visible to the SCADA system. So far, the SCADA system will only see the meters dri and drives. Okay? What we said is, in more complex Profinet networks, you better also visualize the status of the switch. So what we did is, we provided a GSD file for the switch that shows the capabilities of the switch, what you can monitor in terms of SNMP, link up, down, power status, Rx, Tx, typical values that you would scan with an S via SNMP. And with this, the device becomes visible in a SCADA system. And that's what I call uh, a SCADA integrated network management. Now, if you look into the orange part of that slide, I think for many of you, especially when you see GSD files, okay, uh, the bells are ringing because that's very much what IEC 61850 based services network management is about. The same story. We have a protocol, not Profinet, but we have MMS. We have end or process level devices, which are defined as IEDs. They have properties which are defined by logical nodes. And they show their capabilities using ICD files. It's the same story in very different models. So there must be something behind it. So it's not a, a fancy proposal just to use 61850 in order to, net, to do network management. There's something behind. There's a reason why people want to integrate network management in a SCADA system. Now let me just quickly go through for some examples what you will see in, 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 in switches. This is the uh, object model of 61850, very well known. You will see this kind of data and I invite you to the, to the demo you can use the uh, ID scout from Omicron later tonight or tomorrow to browse through the demo box that we have. We do not have only switches, we also have redundancy boxes in the network to, to monitor PRP HSR status. And um, that's what you will see. Um, uh, we will use MMS, of course, as a communication protocol. So the um, data, uh, the status of the switch is stored in an MMS server which will be approached by a client, which is typically the SCADA system, to either read out what the switch is doing or even uh, to write something in order to configure the switch. So that's how it looks like. That's what you're going to see. Uh, not tonight, this is now the, the, the general view on that. You see basically that uh, not only IEDs do have an MMS <coughs> server, but also switches. 
So they appear in the same manner. And here you see a screenshot from Copa Data Senon um, that um, they kindly helped to do for us, um, also on the demo box uh, tonight and tomorrow. And in detail, it looks like this. And I think it's worth to, to have a quick look at um, that screenshot because um, here you see some of the benefits of a SCADA integrated network management. The key focus is this user interface is first is very structured and it's not structured to anything which is related to the network. It's, it's structured according to the, um, the structure of your substation as a process level. So you see already which redundancy box in this case um, or even a gateway is on process level. You see uh, on bay level we have two red boxes which work in coupling mode. What they do here is they, um, they uh, couple the um, ages. The ages are second. No, these are the sorry. These are the boxes which are in coupling mode. Okay, they couple this purple ages R ring into a higher level PRP network. Okay, this PRP network that's something that's very important for us to tell. Can hold RSTP structures. Can hold. Uh, other redundancy structures like the, the MOXA turbo ring, very similar to hyper ring um, re, um, um, architecture. We have another two red boxes which are also added to this PRP network. And last but not least, you see our high performing substation computer, which is a 61 and 50 certified i7 platform with a, with a quad core um, um, uh, processor, uh, which is running. Um, um, the, the power scatter system. Actually, um, it's, it's so powerful that it can do even more, not just running the uh, Xenon. Uh, Xenon. Um, it can also do data <coughs> logging, data processing. That's what it's good for. Okay. So uh, be invited for tomorrow to, to check it out. This is the same thing. If you look into MXView, which is our general network management software. Okay. So you see the same structure. You see the HSR ring, two red boxes in coupling mode. You see turbo ring here and there with standard switches. You see two red boxes attached to LAN A and LAN B in the PRP network. And you see the computer, which is hosting a hardware-based uh, implementation of PRP HSR. We have a dedicated card that runs uh, PRP and HSR as, as a PCIe card in our computer and it's attached to LAN A and LAN B. You see the network is different, it really focuses much on the properties, which port, uh, the links, um, and you don't see much about the underlying architecture. You can move this around and Patrice did a good job in arranging uh, the, um, the, uh, the nodes in a way that it resembles exactly the structure that you saw at, on, on the center interface, but honestly speaking a network management tool doesn't really uh, care if you say auto con if you auto plot the topology, it will just plot you a topology which is right, but will not resemble what you have in your substation. So um, that's a comparison. And the last comparison I want to do is still on um, browsing level. If you compare the MIP file which is holding all the SNMP data, you see this structure comparing again to the IED scout and please be invited again to the demo. You can do it yourself, you can browse the structure, you can see the difference and explain to yourself um, um, the details of it. In fact, the same data is available in both types of views. So what's it all good for? Okay. Um, this is the time of redundancy. I talked already about PRP HSR, also Belden mentioned this. Very, very important for substa substations, and it's about something that I call the spare tire topic. Okay, um, the ones of you who have just bought a car, have you, and who has a spare tire still? Some, or do you use the spray? Yes, I think many of you. Okay, who checked the pressure of the spare tire when you bought it, or did you ever check in any car that you own the pressure of your spare tire? Honestly, I don't, and I'm always lucky when I have a breakdown, a flat tire, that I get into my trunk and I find, hmm, it's enough to get to the next petrol station, okay? So, that's redundancy, right? You have five tires, four are used, 
and one is in the, in the trunk. This analogy is not adequate to PRP HSR because in a PRP HSR car, okay, <laughs> the tires would permanently be swapped and actually you would never really know which tire is currently in use, right? Actually, if you have one connection from A to B and you would like, when we see this with TSN, you would have actually five tires available, only one being used, okay? You would never know which one is currently in use. But that's important, especially if you don't have the luxury scenario of five over one, but only two over one because it's so expensive. That's what I call the redundant network pitfall, because the idea of redundancy and of, of those networks is that they provide a black box where you don't care, you just have it in and out. And if you look deeper into it, you see, of course, that's a very simple PRP, the easiest, the smallest PRP scenario you can ever do. You have two, two parallel redundant paths. And if you look into your, um, if you would look into the pressure of your spare tire, you would see that hmm, only one path is physically healthy while the other one has, for whatever reason, a broken or uh, degraded fiber connection or a, a bad uh, connector, a success rate of maybe 60%. This doesn't matter to the operation because you have enough bandwidth, that's a concept of your network, to drive your operations. But um, what happens if exactly this path breaks down for whatever reason? Then you get stuck and then you figure out, you open the trunk and then you see, mm, I have another flat tire. Okay. So that's what I call the challenge, and that's what you should do, is you continuously should monitor your tire pressure. Not in your car, I think that's just overkill, but, but in, in substations you really want to do this because this is critical infrastructure. Now what does this have to do with network management and PRPHSR? First of all, let, let, me, let me just tell you that in 62439-3, which is defining PRPHSR, all the parameters are in there to help you to monitor the, stati the statistics of the packets that you are, have been duplicated and especially which have been received or not. You know. Typically you don't care. In a healthy situation um, the redundant packet will be just dropped by the receiving IED or, or redundancy box and you don't care because it doesn't hold in necessary information but you should know if you're dropping 8 out of 10 because then the time you're going to need the other path or the other um, part of the HSR ring, you will fail. So the information is available. And how do you do this with 61 and 50? Well, basically, you just make this uh, um, data also available not, uh, for 61 and 50 services, and that is using MMS servers. So here you see a very kind of um, wild scenario Again, kind of the same thing, LAN A, LAN B for PRP HSR, which is in, uh, according to the standard, in blue and green. You see an HSR, basically two HSR rings. You even see RSDP chains added to it. And every item, not only the IEDs, hold MMS servers, but especially the red boxes, which work in uh, either in coupling mode or in um, SAN mode, they have um, this capability. You also see a uh, PRP HSR capable switch, which is also part of the demo, which we will see tomorrow. So that's um, what, what it's about, what's the, the, ben the benefit of, of SCADA integrated network management. And as I promised, um, the last slide is a kind of an attempt to compare what, is, what are the pros and cons. If you look from the graphical user face um, point of view, um, the generic or the general network management um, is, is very much ordered to the needs of network management. Remember the screenshot of MX View. He uh, doesn't care about base and process level, okay? Uh, while the, the, the Xenon one is very much, you can, it's very much tailored to, to the needs of the operators. In, in Xenon, you can just simply click on another tab and then you're in the single line diagram. That moves network management very close to the operations monitoring of a substation. It is not intended to be make operators do network management in substations, but what the, the idea behind that is to lower the threshold of, in, or of, of, of looking into the network, or in other words saying like, we want to extend the time when an operator has to call um, the IT department because the, the uh, network is, um, is down. Well, um, communication protocols 
uh, to be used. That's interesting. Yes, of course, in, in, general, in, in generic uh, network management, you use SNMP, you use LLDP, which are the most widespread and universal protocols to do uh, topology discovery and device discovery. Of course, you're limited in SCADA-based um, systems to the uh, communication protocols, which are there, uh, to, which are the process-oriented protocols, okay? That sounds, it, it is indeed a little bit of a limitation. And the data structure, of course, yes, that's a general one, and oriented towards network, and this is here based on profiles. And that looks also like a restriction, but eventually profiles have been invented not only in 61 at 50, also in Bluetooth, to make the life of users simpler. If you have a profile, you already have some presets, okay? If you tackle a problem, you typically have this application-specific requirements, and these are typically part of the problem. Yeah, and last but not least, of course, um, um, this is application independent, that's why it's called the general network management tool. It's for any kind of application, so it can be used everywhere. While this is application oriented, but still it has the drill down capability. It merges, it's a unified, a unified approach to look into your network. Yeah, that's my uh, point of view for the comparison for the future. You, you already saw me um, mentioning cybersecurity when we look into SCADA integrated network management. I think there's something ahead of us. Uh, also visualize cybersecurity relevant information in SCADA integrated network management software. Thank you.